Welcome back. I'm standing here in front of a 2021 Polestar 2, about to take this guy on the highway and do our 70 mile an hour highway range test. The Polestar 2 is EPA range rated at 233 miles per charge, but that's the combined EPA range rating. The highway EPA range rating is 222 miles per charge. That's gonna kind of be our goal because I think it's more realistic to look at what the highway range rating was than the combined range rating, but hey, I'll take whatever this car will give us. Hopefully we'll blow past both of them. I'm gonna now head over to an Electrify America charging station, top it back off to 100%, then hop out on the highway and drive in loops until she won't go any further. Hopefully that's gonna be well north of 200 miles, but we'll see soon. A couple of things to note is we set the tire pressure to the manufacturer's suggested tire pressure. In the case of the Polestar 2, it's 41 pounds per square inch on the front tires, 42 pounds per square inch on the rear tires. It has a staggered tire pressure. Uh, it's a beautiful day today. It's about 65 degrees and sunny, very little wind. I'll be checking and monitoring my wind app along the way, and uh, we'll see how far she goes. I'll check back in when we're on the road, but first, don't forget, please, tap that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. All right, so we just passed the 25% mark, meaning the battery is at 75% state of charge right now, and we drove 56 miles, not bad. Uh, if that were to hold true for the rest of the journey, we'd finish up with uh, 224 miles driven, a little bit more than the 222 mile highway EPA range rating that the Polestar 2 has. A couple notes we need to make, we always test the uh, speedometer by GPS. Speedometer was a little off, uh, it, was, it was a little fast, so at um, 70 miles an hour, the speedometer showing 70 miles an hour, we're only going 69. So we have the uh, cruise control set at 71 miles per hour, and I checked on two different apps, that locks us in at a constant 70 miles an hour. Uh, temperature is fantastic at 66, 67 degrees. We got a little wind coming from the west, three to four miles per hour, not too bad. Uh, our consumption rating on the car is showing 32.2, kilowatt hour per 100 miles driven. Now different EVs show the consumption rate in different ways. I wish somebody would just create a standard for everybody to use because it's going to confuse uh, new people that are new to electric vehicles. Uh, Tesla for instance shows it in watt hours per mile. Uh, many other manufacturers show in the um, uh, miles per uh, kilowatt hour used. Uh, but here they, the, the Polestar uses it in the kilowatt hours per 100 miles. So it kind of, you know, if, if, if you're not really sophisticated with electric vehicles and you're driving in different EVs, you really won't have any clue what your uh, consumption rating is. Uh, so that, that's a little bit of, a, of, of an issue. I think the cars should all have it selectable. So you can select which uh, type of metric you want to use to show your consumption rate. So at 32.2 kilowatt hours per 100 miles, the car is doing uh, 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour, which isn't fantastic. Uh, it's not terrible, I've seen worse, but it's not great for a 70 mile an hour highway range test on relatively flat ground in, uh, in very favorable weather conditions. It's nice and warm, as I, as I mentioned. Uh, so we're gonna keep going. We'll check back in at 50% and we'll see where we're at. So we are at 50% state of charge now, which means we're 50% along our journey, and we have covered 112 miles. Dead on from what we were predicting when we were at 75% state of charge. If you remember, we went 56 miles, so double that, and we're at 112. The consumption rating uh, has gotten a little worse. It was 32.2 kilowatt hour, per 100 miles driven uh, when we are at 75% charged. Now it's 32.7 kilowatt hour per 100 miles driven. So slightly uh, higher consumption rate. Uh, that could be because of the topography. The turnpike's not exactly level. It also could be uh, the wind. The wind's kind of coming and going. I've been monitoring the app. It got up to six, seven miles an hour. Then it went down to one, two miles an hour. 
So it, it's not going to affect us that much. That's pretty, ne- you know, negligible when we're down to just a couple miles an hour. And it's not a direct headwind or tailwind. It's kind of coming in from the west, so it's getting us in the side of the vehicle. But nonetheless, uh, those things have slight effects on the consumption rate, which is why it kind of varies while we do these tests. We're not on a closed track, perfect conditions, uh, just driving in circles. This is real world. We're out on the highway dealing with uh, cars and traffic and so forth. Um, That said, traffic's been light. We've been able to maintain uh, the 71 miles an hour for nearly the entire trip. Every now and then um, it jams up a little bit. We might slow down to 68, 69 miles an hour for a mile or two. And then what I do is for another mile or two, I'll tick it up to like 71, 72, 73 miles an hour just to kind of offset that whenever I drop below the uh, 70 miles an hour that we want to be driving at. Uh, But for the most part, that's happened very little. I mean, less than, you know, we've covered 112 miles so far. That might have been for, you know, one mile of the entire trip. Uh, So that really doesn't really affect our our results here. Uh, We'll check back in when we are at 25% state of charge. And uh, hopefully we'll be maintaining this uh, track that we've been on. If that's the case, we will... Uh, match or even slightly beat the EPA highway range rating for the Polestar 2 of 222 miles per charge. So we continue to move along and we're at 25% state of charge. And yes, the Polestar 2 is the first car I've driven on the 70 mile an hour range test to deliver the exact amount of range in the first three quarters of the range trip. 56 miles, 56 miles, and 56 miles. A model of consistency. So I passed the 25% mark point just as the range hit 168 miles driven. So that's pretty remarkable that the car in each of the first three quarters of this trip has driven the pretty much within one or two tenths of a mile the exact same distance which is you know i've never had that happen before let's see if we finish up with 224 miles we uh you know we're 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 on pace to do that the uh, consumption rate is staying right around the same we're at 32.6 uh kilowatt hours for for every 100 miles driven right now uh it's been really consistent with that for a while so let's see where we finish up There's one more thing I want to mention, and uh, I can't remember if I said it in the previous update, so uh, excuse me if I'm repeating myself, but it is a warm day today. It's at 70 degrees right now. It's been somewhere between 66, 70 degrees, um, and so it's warm enough where I need the air conditioning on. So I have had the air conditioning on. Uh, Like whenever I do these range tests, I set it at 68 degrees in the cabin, and uh, depending on how well the system works, the fan speed, I try to set it at the lowest fan speed possible, uh, which in this case is fan speed number three. I had it on two for a while, but I had to bump it up because it was getting a little hot in here. The Pulsar 2 has this beautiful panoramic glass roof, and uh, you know when when it's a bright sunny day and the sun's beating down on you, uh, you know I know that these do have um, sun screens built into them. Uh, not a sunscreen, uh, you know UV protection is what I meant. Uh, but it's still they still ra- radiant heat comes down into the same with my Model 3. I have that aftermarket sunscreen that I snap up into the uh, the, the into the uh, panoramic glass roof of my Model 3 because it does let in some uh, some some heat and I don't have it with this. So I have had the air conditioning on the entire day. Uh, so we're sure that that robbed us of a couple of miles of range, but you know, that's um, that's part of the course here when we do these range tests. This isn't on a track with everything turned off in perfect con- conditions. This is just, you know what, you're hopping out on the highway, you wanna see how far the car goes at 70 miles an hour, and that's why we do these tests. Uh, it, it just gives uh, Polestar owners or prospective buyers an opportunity to see of about what they can expect under these conditions in this temperature for highway driving. We're going to check in when we're done. Let's see if it's at 224 miles or not. Um, I'm betting it's going to be because this thing has just been dead on the entire trip. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's really done a good job. Now, I will say when I say dead on, the estimated range hasn't been. That's been kind of off, and um, 
So, I, you know, but I really even look at that in any of my electric vehicles because, you know, the, the gasometer meter, they call it, uh, you know, so many factors that affect it. Uh, very rarely do I find them incredibly uh, accurate. But one of the weird things that I noticed here was that it conflicted, the, uh, the estimated range remaining was in direct conflict with what the navigation system uh, was telling me. Uh, it was saying that I could make the, the range estimator was saying I could make the charging station at the end of this. Google, uh, because this is that uh, native Android system, was telling me, no, you can't. You have to stop at a charging station. You're not going to make it. Um, and I actually recorded a little clip of that. I'll probably dub that in right here. One of the things I'm not crazy about with the Polestar 2 is, as you can see here, it shows that there's 95 miles of estimated remaining range left. Okay, great. However, come over to the nav system and I'm on a course that's supposed to be only 83 miles away and it's saying that I can't make it. Uh, the car warned me that I would need to stop and charge and the battery there shows 0%. So now it's at 82 miles. We're still at 95 miles here. So that'll confuse owners. Um, you know, it's telling you you can go 95 miles, yet over here it's saying you can't even go 82 miles. Which one is it, Polestar? So the next check-in is at the end. Hopefully we'll make it to the Electrify America DC fast charge station and I uh, won't be calling AAA. I have a feeling we're gonna make it. It's, it's, it's really close. The map is saying that we'll make it with 1% state of charge. Uh, and uh, because this thing's been so accurate the whole way, I'm kind of giving it uh, the benefit of the doubt that it's gonna remain accurate. Uh, we'll see, we'll check in when we're done. So as you can see, we did make it, but not without some major worrying. Now I've cut it close with these highway range tests before where I've timed it kind of just where I'm arriving at the uh, charging station, but it was a little different this time. So when I still had about five miles to go and I had driven uh, 225 miles, the car started to, um, it was at 2% state of charge and it started to go in reduced power mode where I didn't feel safe on the highway. Uh, you know, it, it was having trouble maintaining the speed. When I floored it all, when I pressed the accelerator all the way to the floor, it like didn't respond. So at that point, I've driven enough EVs to know when, when you don't get any kind of response when you press the accelerator, you're getting really close to the end. So I had to change my route. I, I couldn't stay on the highway. I had to get off do some back roads, and that made it even longer, but I could drive at slower speeds. So I only drove at highway speeds for 226 miles. I drove at 70 miles an hour. Then I had a bail and um, drove another six miles at like 25 miles an hour um, because the car was in turtle mode. It was, it, it wouldn't even go any faster. Uh, I, was, I was worried, I, I really didn't think, I thought this was gonna be the first time I didn't make it. I definitely didn't think I was gonna make it here, but you know, it hit zero and it still went, I think five, four and a half miles past zero. So the uh, ending range is 233 miles, uh, but I only drove uh, 225, 225 and a half. I have to take a look exactly at my video um, at 70 miles an hour. So that's what I'm gonna call it. At, at the 70 mile an hour range test is at 225 or 226 miles. Uh, because we couldn't maintain 70 miles an hour any longer than that, even though I was able to go 233 miles. Uh, you know, impressive. Uh, the, the Polestar 2 beat its EPA highway range rating of 222 miles. And the funny thing is, we finished up with 233 miles, which is the Polestar 2's EPA combined range rating. Uh, but like I said, the last... Uh, uh, I don't know, six miles or so, I have to look at the, the video, uh, was at lower speeds. I think I bailed at 226, so that would be less seven miles was driven at not at highway speed. So, you know, you could accept whatever number you want. Uh, I'm gonna call it officially at 226, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, we finished up with an efficiency of, uh, I think it was 32.2, uh, a kilowatt hours per 100 miles. That's because on those last few miles, we lowered our consumption because uh, we were driving slower. Uh, but over the course of the, the day, for the most part, it looked like we were right around 32.4, uh, 32.5, somewhere like that, I think 
was uh, a, a, a good number as an average for the day. Uh, and uh, it was great range weather. The wind wasn't bad. Uh, we peaked at about 70 degrees. We, we were down to maybe uh, 64, 65 at the lowest. So this was all excellent range weather and uh, the Polestar 2 made a good showing. So that's it for our Polestar 2 uh, 70 mile an hour highway range test. Don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge.